etorkizuna eraikiz martxan jarri genuen, batez ere galdera bati erantzutuko. Eta galdera zan, ez zer gertatuko dan urrengo urtetan gipuzkoan, baizik zer egingo dugun urrengo amar urtetan gipuzkoan. Ez orduan, gure intuizioa da, azkeneko urtetan, urte luzetan gipuzkoan egindala prospekzio lana, gogoan daukat aurroko lege aldian, egon ginenean foru aldun dian jarri gendula, ekin behin bat izan azuena gipuzko hau gehi hogei, eta 2008-ra begira gipuzkoan zer gertatuko zen aurreratzeko tresna bazan, eta hori ondo dago, baina askotan gertatzen dena dazu, hori txez zula prozesu horren onderen, bat txosten mardul bat agero sartzen duzu kajoian, eta hor galdizen da. Ez dauka inungo transformazio rako almenik. Eta guke horrelako enfoke bat egiteko momentuan berria, esan genuen, bueno, ba guazen, etorkizunari begira egiteko planetementua esperientzi pilotoetara eramatea, alegia esperimentazio aktibo da martxan jartzea. Eta gipuzkoak dauzkan debate nagusiak eta erronka nagusietan jartzea esperientzi pilotoa martxan. Eta hori da etorkizun arekizek gure ustez bentzet ekartzen dion berrikuntza gipuzkoari. Dagoeneko ez da bakarrik hausnarketa, baizik da hausnarketa eramana esperientzia pilotoetara. Orduan, marik jarri genuen martxan etorkizun arekiz marko bezala, guk etorkizun arekizen egin nahi duguna da gipuzkoa antolatu guztialekin partekatu hausnarketa hori, alegia, bagizarte politiketan, kultur munduan, eragile sozialetan, Euskararen inguruan dauden eragile guztiekin partekatu hausnarketa hori, aztu gabe baita ere enpresa mundua, industria mundua, eta guztiekin nahitzeko hausnarketa hori, gero eraman nahi dugu esaten duen bezala esperientzi pilotoetara. Orain arte, hausnarketa horrek gauzatu dizkigu edo zehaztu dizkigu zenbat, zenbait esperientzia piloto. Bat, neretzako oso importantea, da langileen parte hartzea bultzatzeko proiektu bat enpresetan. Eta zuek irudikatzeko nola egiten dugun, guk esaten dugu, bueno, guazen autatzea urtean amar enpresa, eta gainera izan daitezela gipuzkoako industria edo enpresa irudikatzea duten sektore diferentetako enpresak, amar, eta hoietako bakoitzean jarriko dugu langileen parte hartze prozesu bat martxan. Izan litzeke kudeak eta arloan, edo izan daitzeke baita ere langileen parte hartza kapitalean, enpresaren kapitalean bertan. Hori izan da esperientzi piloto bat jadagoeneko martxan dagoena, gutxi gora bera hogei bat enpresa daude ja esperientzi horiek martxan jartzen, eta antzeko kontu bat egin dugu, estrategia berdinarekin, berdintasun arloan, gizon eta emakumen arteko berdintasunean. Guk uste dugu gipuzkoan hor haudabe importantea daukagula arlo ekonomikoan, industria arloan, bat ipaz uzen daritza zea arlo mailetan atzera pausua hondiak ematen ari gera hor, ez bakarrik aurora pausuak ez gara ematen nahi, baizik atzera pausuak ematen ari gara. Orduan, hor ere, amar enpresatan urtean, jarriko ditugu, erantzunke dietasun eta berdintasun politikak martxan. Hori izango lehoi izango lehoi eteke, bi esperientzi netzako bintzet azpimarragarriak. Irugarrengo bat, gizarte politiketan, nahi dugu jarri martxan, gipuzkoan, pasaian, zehazki erreferentziazko zentru bat, ba, zahartze eta osasun arloan, izango da, zaharren egoitza bat, persona adinekoen egoitza bat, baina enfoke berritzaile eta ekonomia sotutuko duena baita ere. Eta laugarren puntua, laugarren esperientzi pilotoa Mikelek aipatu du hasieran. Ikusu entzunezkoak Euskara sustatzeko faktoria bat, esperientzi pilotoa martxan jartzeko, gu nahi ganuko hori egitea tabakaleran. Hori ere, ari gara une honetan lantzen, baina enfoke berdinarekin. Alegia, ikuspegi konpartetxo batean, eta proiektu zehatz bat martxan jartzeko. Ez bakarrik teoria, izik, ekintza konkretu batekin. Protesu guzti horretan, gu nahi dugu baita ere ezagutza egotea. Eta ezagutza hori ekarriko dute unibersitadek. Unibersitadekin ekarlana oso jarraia daukagu eta oso sakona daukagu etorkizunarik ez guztian. Eta beste atal bat, gaurkoak hor dauka enkaje nagusia, izango letzateke nazio arteratze sarea, gukuste dugulako, asko daukagula ikasteko mundu maian esperentzi aurreratuetatik. Eta horrelakoak antolatu ditugunean sektore diferentetan, konturatu gara Europako iparraldeko herrialdetan topatzen ari girela, bai berdintasun arloan, bai berrikuntza arloan, bai ikusen entzunezko industria kreatiboen inguruan, esperentzi oso aurreratuak, eta hoietan guk asko ikasi dezakegula. Pizkat gu egia da egoaldea garela Euskal Herrian, Baina iparraldeko herrietara begira, ari gara hainbat eta hainbat arlotan. Nik uste du gainera, gure gizartearen sensibilidade nagusiak 
bat egiten duela iparraldeko herrietan dagoenarekin. Guk garbi daukagu, azkeneko krisiaren ondorioz desberdintasuna indartzen joan dan neurrian mundu maian, guk ipuzkoan indartu behar dugula desberdintasunari aurre egiten dio modelo bat. Eta desberdintasuna izan leitzaike arlo sozioekonomikoan, izan leitzaike genero kontuetan, gizon eta makuen arteko desberdintasuna, eta baita ere ikuspegi linguistikotik. Horregatik, Mikel Lenz zuzen da daitzak izan dago, berdintasun, izkuntz berdintasun zuzen daritza. Uste dugulako, Euskara eta Gaztelearen artean, berdintasun hori, horeka hori, indastu barra gaukagula. Besteri gabe, nik esan, zergatik ekarri dugun onea betina jargup izan azta gitasun duzan dudan, baina Danish Business Authority iren zuzendari nagusia dugu, eta guk interes berezia daukagu batipat industria sortzailen inguruan bere autoridadeak eta gobernuak, enzatzen ere gobernuaren agentzia badalako. Zer estrategia era manduten, ikusten dugulako, ba, 6 milioi biztan lehera iristen herrialde batek, jakin duela garatzen ikusentzunezko industria oso boteretsua indartxu bat, nazio arten maian incidentzia ondia daukana, edo oiartzuna ondia daukana. Danak ez dautzen dugu adibidez borgen seria, eta neretzako berezgarria dena da, daniera sortutako serie badala. Alegia, gure herriaren txako, bai da izpilu bat nun ikustezak egun guru berua islatua, eta nun asko ikasi daukagun. Aizuzten ere, izkuntza ez da minorizatu ba, aizuzten ere, daniera, dani markako izkuntza ofiziala eta nagusia delako, baina herri txiki bat, mundu maian, herri txiki batek nola jakin duen garatzen industria bat horrelako kalidadearekin eta mundu maiako oiartzunarekin. Eta nik uste dut guk bauk agula baita ere Euskal Herrian eta Gipuzkoan esango nuke ambizio horrekin jokatzeko eskubidea eta obligazioa. Bauk agu talentua, nik uste dut azkenean repartete bintzen referentziazko zentru bat martxan jarri nahi dugunean, gur nahi dugu eragile guztiak elkarlanean ipini, justu ambizioz jokatzeko eta aurrera pausuak aurrera emateko. Ese sería un poco mi introducción desde la lectura de que la apuesta en el territorio de Ipuzkoa, respondiendo a la primera frase que he utilizado, sería qué vamos a hacer durante los próximos diez años en el territorio. Y para eso, pues contamos con la asistencia de Betina y le cedo la palabra. Es que gracias. To be here, um, it's been uh, 20 years since I last visited San Sebastian, um, and um, I must say, I think I've even forgotten how beautiful it was, and uh, how I think you're very lucky to live in a place like this, where you have so much beautiful architecture uh, and beautiful scenery. So. What I'm going to try today is to give you a presentation about, uh, first of all, what the, the creative industry is in Denmark, uh, how we work with it, and um, how we've actually maybe changed our focus a bit uh, about how we see the creative industries. Um, and um, that, of course, has something to do with, um, I think, we are in the middle of a paradigm shift um, I will talk a bit about why I think we are in a paradigm shift. It has, of course, something to do with the way we are going to digitalize and the way the world is changing. And somehow, I think that is going to influence on how we do policy making uh, in, um, in, um, in the creative industries, but also in other industries, it's going to influence how we, how we think about things. So this is uh, my, uh, my agenda. Um, which I hope to come uh, through. I've heard I have around uh, 20 minutes to get you through this. Maybe I, I'll get a bit carried away, so it will take a bit longer, but I'll try to, <laughs> to do it within this, uh, this uh, time frame. Okay, maybe just a bit, little bit about where we come from. I come from the Danish, uh, I'm a part of the Danish Ministry of um, of, uh, um, uh, of uh, industry, business, and financial affairs, where the Danish uh, business authority sits. Um, we are in the Danish business authorities. We have a huge amount of um, of 
different uh, things we deal with. We deal with entrepreneurship. Uh, we have a lot of the, the regulation. Um, I won't go into all that because that's not relevant uh, for, what, for what we're talking about today. Just to give you an idea, idea about what, we, what kind of a authority we are. Our vision is to create the best growth conditions in Europe. And uh, we do it through partnership with others to make it easy and attractive to run a business in Denmark. Um, and we have some strategic guide points for post for our work. We are very much focused on business data. This is also a new thing for us, using our data for, the, for giving it to the business so they can actually make new business models uh, they can work with. Um, it's, a very, it's a new area, but it's a very important uh, because it means a lot to the new business models. We uh, work very much that we have predictable and responsible business conditions. We want to make a simple life uh, for the businesses, not introducing too much administrative burdens. And we are very occupied with, with creating growth conditions for all of Denmark, not only the capital of Denmark, which is uh, Copenhagen, which, where there is a lot of activities, but also outside in the more remote areas. And then we have a lot in regards to international cooperation, working for open markets. We deal with the digital single market, uh, which is you know, the ongoing thing which is going on in the commission now, trying to finalize that. So we are in Denmark, you could say a very rich uh, country. It looks good. Uh, you see we, uh, it, it, in, in the latest OECD, it looks good. We are doing okay, but behind this, there's a lot of challenges also, and that's what also I'll try to give you. You see, they're the green ones. That is the OECD benchmark. The green ones where we are doing very good is wealth and productivity level, but where we're not doing so good is productivity growth. Work hours per employee and business investment is not going very good. And uh, productivity growth, which is our main focus now, where we, you can see we have uh, lagged behind and we have even fall. We can see that a lot of uh, productivity issues in our country and we are not moving in the right direction. We are falling behind. So it's a strong focus. How do we increase our productivity? And um, you can also see that's not, um, I don't know why it is uh, in, uh, in our neighbors in, uh, in Sweden, they call us the Latinos of Northern Europe. Um, and that is because uh, they say the Danes, and it's true, we don't work that much. We like the good life, <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, and um, it's a real challenge uh, that, uh, that how do we, uh, we c the government can't increase the number of working hours because it's something that, that is uh, dealt with by the unions and the, and the employers, but it's a challenge that we don't uh, work enough. And maybe we shouldn't work more, but maybe we should work a bit smarter. But it's a, uh, it's a, it's a view that, you know, something the government has quite a focus on how we solve this thing. And then there is a business investment, which is not going well, very well um, compared to our neighbors, Sweden, Netherlands, and so on. And if you look behind these figures, I think one of the challenges here is that um, it's especially the business investment in the small and medium enterprises, which since the crisis has fallen behind. And um, I think it's a general tendency, and it also goes for the creative industries, that we can see that there is not enough investment in the SMEs, and a lot of the Danish business societies are the SMEs. So this is the challenge we also are looking into how we can solve. Then a bit about we had a new government uh, two year, one and a half years ago who's made a, a, a strategy, Denmark going for growth it's called, which is, has sort of three pillars. First of all, how do we get into the new digital world? How do we automate the Danish industry? How do we make them use data? How do we, um, how do we, uh, promote sharing economy and all these new tendencies. Industry 4.0, it's called. How do we make one of the most attractive environments for entrepreneurs? How do we do that? 
uh, we've got a good starting point. It's quite easy to set up a company and so on in, in Denmark. I think our challenge is not getting, you know, there's a large number of startups. Our challenge is to grow the startups so they become larger companies. We have very, very small and very small enterprises. And of course, then there is a new global economy. How do we place ourselves in regards to the EU and to the international economy? How, does, uh, how do we secure that Denmark has an attractive place in this so we can attract investments and so on? These are the pillars in the government strategy. And then you say, what about the creative uh, industries? Where are they in this strategy? Well, first of all, it's in the digital growth um, and it's, of course, in the uh, strengthening the business strategy for the core strengths. And what do I mean that, by that? Well, we have made, uh, or the government has made some areas where they say they are looking at these are the core competencies in Denmark and how do we go through this whole value chain there is in this, uh, these um, different industries. How do we look at the life science? How do we look at education for life science, export for life science, the, the, the framework there is for the life science, and the same in the creative, creative industries. How do we look to, optimi to optimize the framework for these industries? How do we work with this? And we've picked out, the, the government has picked out these areas saying these are some of the main target groups we want to work with and to ensure that we have very optimal conditions here. Um, what is the creative industry? That I'm going to talk a bit about. Um, what actually is the creative industries? Now, um, this, these, I think there are 11 uh, different areas which uh, when you just sta started discussing about creative industries, was something like, like this you discussed. And I think the creative industries is actually, if you look at it historically, is something that's quite new. It was something that, that was invented in the UK in the 90s by Tony Blair, who made his first, uh, who, which government made the first um, strategy for creative uh, industries. And um, the way we looked at it and have also looked at it in Denmark is that we've taken these uh, areas and said, well, these are the ones who, are, who contain the creative industries. Um, a snapshot, what it is in Denmark, is uh, 6 to 7 percent of, uh, of the national turnover, 27 billion, uh, 85,000 employees, um, and it's very export-driven, many small and medium-sized enterprises, um, it has a high educational level. These are some of the characteristics for the, for the industry, which at least in Denmark, but I think uh, I know a lot from the Netherlands and the UK. I think it's pretty similar in a lot of the economies. This is how the creative industry looks. The former government made a strategy in 2013, and uh, I was a part of that strategy group that worked with the, the creative industry. Um, and um, and uh, we did a lot of, uh, we had a lot of discussion. It was a group that was led by, um, by um, it was a private public sector group that was led by uh, the director general of, uh, of the Danish broadcasting uh, television, um, who was chairing the group. And we had a lot of discussions about what is this creative industry and how do we look at it. And what we did in, in 13, was perhaps right at that time, but as I'm going to tell you a bit, I think we actually got it wrong of how we look at the creative industries, and I think we need to look at the creative industries in a new way, uh, because this was very much driven by the old economy. And what do I mean by this? <laughs> I mean that the way we looked at it was very industry-based, sector-specific sector, sector and creative. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, in the, we looked at first fashion. And then we looked at the fashion industry at itself. What kind of products did they uh, produce? They produced fashion, you know, fabrics, clothes. We look at the architecture, what did they, they produce drawings. So it was very, very sector specific and very industry specific, and we looked at the output of it. 
And I think that we need to do, and I'll, I'll tell you, that is a, one of the points with my, my presentation. I think we need to look at it in a completely different way than we did before. Because if you look at the, 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 the really sector specific, you also look at the, the creative sector in a very silo way. Um, and you look of how you can actually support this, and you do it a very top-down way. Um, instead of, and you give, you give grants, you give soft money, you give loans, and so on to promote these sectors. But I don't think, and I can see that from the strategy that we did in, in 13, I don't really think it moved the creative industry. Um, and that, even though I was a part of it and thought it was really smart at the time we did it, I thought it was the right way. Um, and we did, it ended up, this uh, strategy, we ended up saying, oh, what we are going to support is, um, is design, fashion, and architecture. These are the things in our main, uh, in our main um, uh, strategy here we are going to support. And it's not that, that Denmark doesn't have a strong um, position in design and architecture is not that strong. It's just a way of thinking, I think, that is, is problematic. And because the way of thinking was, and that's actually inspired from, from, the, from the UK when, when Blair started and the UK started to think about how do we stimulate this creative industry. Then you said, well, in the, in the, in the core of it is the, is the creative industry. It might be fashion, you know, or it might be uh, film. Then you would have uh, music, and you would have sort of a spread out where it became sort of the, f the, it came out to the rest of the industry, or rest of the economy, the creative industry. So, and what we really measured and what we had focused on in policy was in the core of, uh, of that industry. So we would stimulate the sector, and then we would think the other things would come automatically. Now, I think that we need to, have, we tur to turn this around. And why, why do I think this? I think this because we are living in a completely world, other world now, which is more uh, coherent, which is much more connected, and which is much more digital than we used to have. So I think we should go from this industry-based uh, cultural approach to a much more growth-oriented uh, business approach. And what do I mean like, with that? I mean we should think a bit like investors, like uh, investment banks, investors, about how we can actually promote and roll out these industries. Now, I've made a diagram of here of how I see the creative businesses. Some of them are based, if you go down there, are based on originals. This is um, like an exhibition or like a haute couture where you have one of a kind. This is, this is the originals. This is part of the creative uh, industry, of course. Then there are some who are based much more on experience. In spirit, they can also be once in a lifetime, like a concert or something like that. And then you have the, the, the creative industries which are based on services. That's PR, architecture, design, and so on. And then you have the content uh, industry, which is, um, which is like uh, publishing and, and other areas. Now, if you look at this um, list drawing, you can see what is, what is, what is, what is really the, the in, in regards to doing politics, is the essence of this. And if you are an investor, these down below the, the line, they can't scale. You cannot scale an haute couture, not really. Maybe you can make a, a full collection of it, but it's not really scalable. You cannot scale a museum. You cannot scale arts, a picture. It's a one in a kind. Whereas you look up and the other side, these are all scalable and they have a lot of potential. So this is, I think, is a very, very, very interesting thing because this is also a thinking of how you could actually look at your industry. Now, 
There's also a diff difference between uh, services and contents. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the services you would have um, is uh, less uh, labor intensive, uh, but it's very capital intensive if you look at some of these uh, areas. You need a lot of capital to drive scale. Whereas in the, in the, in the film industries and other in these uh, contents, it's much more scalable, but it's very cap capital intensive. But once you've got your concept, you can actually scale it. And I think this has a lot of potential for how you think politics in regards to this. Um, it has been traditionally in Denmark where we, it was like this, all the, the design and the architecture, we thought of that as industrial policies, whereas the content was defined as cultural policies. And I don't know if it's like this in, in this country, but uh, I think that is where we have to change our way of thinking if we want to have a growth policy in regards to some of, the, some of these areas where there is a lot of potential, because the potential is in the cultural policy areas, but it means that we have to change a way of thinking about it. So, I won't go, I won't go into that because I think I've made my point that we should think about how we build for scale, and that's how we should look at our, at our, our industries. Now, I'll give you an example of the gaming industry in, uh, in Denmark. Um, I know you mentioned the film industry, but the gaming industry in, in the Northern European context is also uh, very interesting. These are examples of uh, unicorns. You know what unicorns is? It's, uh, uh, it's companies that over $1 billion worth uh, of, um, of value. These are some of the unicorns which are created in, um, in, uh, in, 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 the, in the Scandinavian uh, Nordic countries. Unfortunately, the most uh, valuable ones are Swedish. I don't like that too much, <laughs> but, but they are. Uh, but it's just to say, like, you know, some of them, like King, you know this Candy Crush? Yes. And you could say Candy Crush. I just have to tell you, this company was sold to at twice the value of Volvo. Okay? Twice the value of Volvo. It says something. And it's not a very old company. And it's, uh, I'm sorry to say, maybe some of you played, I think it's a silly game, but it has tremendous potential. And it's, you, you remember going back, it's scaled. It's scaled there. Once they have the platform, they could actually scale it quite crazily. Twice the amount of Volvo. Okay? Now, the Danish gaming industry, we've also got, we've got some growing, uh, um, um, what do you call it, gaming industry. And of course, connected to the Scandinavian industry, I think that's also a very important thing that you have to make some of the clusters where you connect uh, with some of them. It's, um, it's qu doing quite well. It has a, comp a big rise, like uh, it's the number of companies has ri risen by 15%, quite a lot, um, and a big increase compared to the benchmarks, also in jobs and, and revenue. So it's doing quite well. And um, these are some of the recent figures from, from Denmark. And I said, as I said, I started out by saying, I think there is a lot of potential in the creative industries, especially in regards to the content. And that's not, I'm not saying that the other creative industries are not important um, also in Denmark, because the other creative industries have meant a lot, for instance, of creating a brand of Denmark, like we've uh, had a lot with Noma, the food, which would uh, be not of something that would be unique, but it has been, meant a lot for the brand of Denmark that we have a place where we have a lot of good restaurants, it attracts creative people and so on, but it actually, it's not something that you will make a, a growth case or a growth business out of it, it's too unique. 
But that said, you can see that these are the recent figures from, from, from Denmark that is, a lot is going on in regards to the creative industry. It's sort of taking up. And I also think that has something to do with the, with the digitalization and the whole new world about our consumption of, uh, of products that the creative industry makes, actually. So it's taking much more up than, than other sectors. So you remember this? I thought it was very smart when I was part of it in 2013, but I don't believe in this model anymore. I believe that you should look in the, to the creative industry in a different way than we did at that time. So we need, we need a completely different model where we think of the creative uh, um, industries uh, more as a whole instead of the sector-wise approach we have to it. And I also think that we need to look on some of the policy map that we actually have for these creative industries and how we, we, we look at this, this in, a, in a different way. Um, I think there is a lot of going on in, the, in regards to the regulatory framework, which we have to be very observant. Um, we have to be, uh, there's a lot of going on, for instance, in the EU about geo-blocking. Uh, we're discussing that a, a lot at the moment. But there's also a lot about intellectual property rights. How do you secure that? How do you look at the uh, competitive environment? How do you secure that you have an industry for instance, that is not a, it's not a state-owned uh, television channel that produces all the content, but you actually have a private sector that produces the content, because that is very important if you want to go into export and scalability and all this. So, um, so it's a lot of important in the, in the regulatory fr framework. I also think that you should look a lot to the education. I think it's very important that you uh, you uh, look at the creative, uh, how do you make creative programs uh, in the education? How do you also secure that you have a, a different skill mix focus? There's a lot of new skills that's required in the creative industry, a lot of new computering skills, for instance, uh, which is very important in order for, for this really to, to move. I think also there is much more uh, has to be a focal on commercial competencies. A lot of the education we've had in the, in the, in the creative industry has no focus on commercial uh, competencies. And it's very important if you want to make this into a business and not something arty. Not that there's not wrong with arty, but, but it's, it's very important. And then, of course, you have to uh, have access to finance and to capital, which has been quite a, a challenge in Denmark because we have all these SMEs I and it's been very difficult for them to, to get finance. Um, um, and I'm not talking about projects, I'm talking about investments, really investments, people coming in and investing in the creative sector, that's important. So I think what's very important in this shift of paradigm is that we, we really, the government, we should, we should think about facilitating partnerships. I think this is very, very important. How do we facilitate partnerships? How do we create an ecosystem? How do we create an ecosystem where there are strong competencies, strong uh, creative businesses that work together with the companies? Um, and then I say, it's so, what is actually going to succeed and what is not going to succeed? If, if, if somebody had asked me, would I think Candy Crush would be a success? I would have said no. But I'm a government official. And I think we should, we should leave these things to the businesses and not do projects about it. Leave it to the business of what they think will drive it. That's the commercial risk there is. Uh, but our role as government is to try and facilitate these partnerships, making it easy for you to be a creative business. Um, I think that's, um, that is our role. That was uh, a bit over my time. 
um, and I, you know, I can get carried away by this, but uh, I hope it makes sense to you. Uh, this is how we at least see things in Denmark at the moment. Ona que mandes que hola, os ondo con cato duela, sorgunzaren y saerá se arca coa. Esto te estaba la sectores sorzalio dales y que te sorgunza lo tu verdad de este esparro ascotan eta baita ere ekimen público aren y saerá de un estos ondo con cato duela. Uria su está pen la nada lanqui de zac a la industria de educar también la industria industria está co por las caras cosas de irse a Pozik entzungo zen dutela hori, guk ere, anguritzat ere oso argigarria, oso argigarria zen delako. Uste dut ondo kokatuta dagoela, sorkuntza industrien rola, edo sorkuntza industrien guk izaketen izaera traksio izaera hori. Gure bigarren partean, landuko dugunaren esparrua pixka bat zehatzagoa da, ikusen zunezkoen esparrua da. Eta orduan, pixka bat jeisten azteko edo urbiltzen azteko, bantatu gondi zuk eia sormen industrien edo zuk aipatu duzun testu inguru zagol hortan ikusen zunezkoen pixua, ikusen zunezkoen proportzioa izan pantalia guztietan konsumitzen diren ikusen zunezkoen pixua, rola, papela, zein den, Dani Markan. I think it's very important, but to be quite honest, I think, um, you know, we've had a lot of uh, content, um, had the Borgen and so on. Now this content, it came from, um, it came from the cultural perspective. Yeah. And I, I have to tell you that the Danish film industry does not make any money. It's yeah. a cultural project. But. And it's a bit of a coincidence that I actually these, you know, it came about that we had these international th successes, I think. Um, it's, it's, it's brought by, um, I think, a group of production companies and a group of in, within the television sector who actually made a group of, of uh, you know, writing series and then Borgen is just one of the series they work with. So I think it's a very important um, branch for cultural wise, but unfortunately, we have not made any money of it on it, and that's why I say maybe we need to change the perspective also in Denmark of how we're looking in these things, because I actually think that that this if you if you've had another approach, I would think that you would have been able to make money on it, but because we had the approach that we gave grants and we didn't have any demand for it to be commercial. It was a coincidence. It became commercial and exportable to the world. So I think that we need to, that's why I'm saying also I need, I think we need to change the concept because I actually think there is a potential in some of these very scalable things like audiovisual and, um, and um, um, gaming and some of the other things that which, which are over in that sector. I would say, if I look at you, I would say that one of the challenges that we have in Denmark, of course, is also that we are extremely small language. I mean, I know you speak Basque, but you also speak Spanish here. Mm -hmm. So you have a much broader market. I mean, in Denmark, we have five million, and with a bit of luck, the Swedish and the Norwegians understand a bit of Danish, but otherwise, nobody understands it. So, um, so, to give you the answer, I think there is a lot of potential in it, but I think that we started up with the TV series and the film industry on the cultural, and doing a cultural project, not doing a commercial project. And I think you should do a commercial project in order for it to be scalable and to make money on it. Zemaite eraino, bueno, Dani era izkuntza ofiziala da noski Dani Markan, baina, bueno, iztunko puru mugatua dauka, eta ingelesaren presentzia pentsatzen dut oso hondia dela gazte guztiek ingo dute. Zergatik Dani argazte batek 
konsumitzen du e, ikusentzunezkoa, zergatik dabil e, interneteko edukietan, zergatik dabil danieraz eta ez ingelesez. Zer dau e, horren atzean? Oh, that's a hard question. Because I think, um, let's start in another place. I don't know anybody who watches, young people who watches flow television anymore. They're all watching Netflix, at least a lot of the young people I know. But in spite of that, I don't know, some of these TV series, the Danish TV series, they became modern. And I don't know, that's hard to say why they do. It's in, in, in the UK, it's uh, cool to be Scandinavian. I mean, that's it. It's everything Scandinavian is nice. Clothes, Scandinavian clothes, Scandinavian food, Scandinavian. And how that came along. I think it's a, it's a pressure from a lot of things, you know. Um, and that, make, that made it, you know, cool also to watch Danish TV series. Uh, they, in, 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 in the UK, they have, um, we have a, this a very special thing called hygge which is something really crazy, Danish, Norwegian also, which we have a good time together. And this hygge, it's a, it's a concept. They've written four books about it in England, and it's, I mean, it's, it's nothing, <laughs> but it's, it's become modern. Mm -hmm. And how do, how, do you, how do you envisage when something becomes a trend? I don't know, but it's a trend now, it's modern. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Euskera moloia ezatea, euskera ziten da moloia ezatea, hori gako hori oso garrantzitsu ezan hori ezateke. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, beste modu batera aldetu eta baita ere, ezkuntzarekin lotu gabe bada ere, baina e, dani, dani eraz, dani markan sortutako seri edo produktu eduki horiek e, bertakoak dira, lokalak dira, baina aldi berean, Universal bihurtzen dira, zure ustez, nola uztartu behar da e, eduki lokala eta historia lokala eta ezaugarri lokal horiek, nola kudeatu behar dira eduki horiek e, universalak ere bihurtu eta ez eta beste batzun interesekoak. But I think there are a lot of issues which are actually universal today. I mean, there are trends in, 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 in the world which are universal, which we all speak about. I mean, we speak about the climate cha change. Uh, we speak about Trump. Uh, <laughs> so there are issues which are universal. Um, I think the, the thing is that at the challenge, if you want to produce something, or if you're a content provider, uh, is to find what are these, what are these trends and what, how can you actually address them? And I think that is perhaps something that's very difficult. Like, like I said, in the gaming industry, who would think, maybe I'm, I'm too old, who would think Candy Crush would be a tremendous success? I wouldn't have seen it. So something, some things like this, is, I think it's very hard to predict. Mm -hmm. But suddenly they are there. And it's not that, as I say, it's not that we don't, I think we think a lot because the, the, the universe or the world, or at least in Europe, or have become, we can become very much alike. We, sp we speak about the same things, we read the same things, we have the same, but, but it's actually finding mm -hmm. that, that has that appeal for a wide uh, range of people. I think that's really hard. Mm. But that's why there are brilliant filmmakers and brilliant content providers. Sometimes they can just say, well, this is kind of what it's going to be. But it's very hard to predict. Len, handi krasen arrakasta ipatu duzu, datu bat eman gozizu, testakizuna. Espainiako parlamentuko presidenta, Espainiako parlamentua bilduta zeun saio garrantzitsu baten, eta presidentea itzegiten ari zala, goitik arrapatutako telebista kamara batek erakutsi zuen presidente, gobernuko presidenteak itzegin bitartean e, parlamentuko presidenta handi krasen e, jolazen ari zala saio berean, arrakasta benetan handia da. 
Betina, aipatu duzu, zure ikuspegian, bueno, transizio bat, iraganeko eredu batetik, eredu berri baterako transizio bat ikusi duzu. Transizio hori, esan gozo nuke, gauzatuta dagoela, bukatuta dagoela, edo transizioa justu izango da egoera beti mugitzen arituko dan, beti moldatzen arituko dan egoera batera. Nola egusten duzu? No, I don't think so. And I think the speed of the challenges or the, 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 the things that we are going to experience is only going to increase. Um, what I think is really, uh, and, it's, and it's very hard to predict, I mean, how the, how the future is going to look. But if you look at content, I think one of the tendencies you've seen, I mean, last five or ten years, is that if you have some content, you can use it on so many platforms. That's probably, that's, I think, a worldwide tendency. And that's also what I mean about scalability and looking at some of these things. For instance, going back to the gaming industry. Now, you would think the gaming industry was an entertainment industry, and it is. But some of the things that you can see also in the gaming industries is that you're starting to use the same gaming techniques in regards to um, medical instructions, uh, where you, you use gaming, you know, as a way of, uh, of explaining things. I have seen gaming industry transferred into um, HR in selection of people. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? But where you use artificial intelligence and you test people via gaming, you know, you go in and play a game and they can see your cognitive intelligence is like this and this and this and put a... So, so what I'm trying to say is, I think that we... And that's, that's, that's also what I mean about the, the content industry having a big potential. You are seeing it moving to various different platforms. So you can use one content or one technique in a various... In the ways we never even thought of it before. And that's why the content industry is so, so interesting, I think. Hizkuntza kontutara itzulita, gure ikusentzunezkoetan eta gure konsumoetan oitura elebakarrak hartu ditugu, Espainia ereduari jarraituz oitura elebakarrak hartu ditugu eta Lehen tasun eman zaio ikusentzun ezkon konsuman izkuntza bikoizteari, hau da, izkuntza originalaren ganean gaztelanea euskera jartzearena. Europan, ez dakit, zuen kasuan, azpitituloen erabilera jatorrizko izkuntza eta bertako izkuntzaren azpitituloen kontua gai honi buruz zein da zure ikuspegia, zein da zuen esperientzia? Um, in the Danish broadcasting industry, you would always have Danish um, um, translated. You would have, you know, uh, the original language and then Danish translated. But I think that the, the challenge for us, um, both as, as Danish and, 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 and the Basque language, is that if you look at all the young people, I mean, they're bilingual. In, in Denmark, is you speak Danish and English. Uh, and here you probably speak Basque mm -hmm. and, and Spanish. So, so it's, it's something that's, it's a, it's a real, and, and I think it's going to be more of that in the future, that we, we're just going to speak more and more English. You can see our, our, our language is very influenced by a lot of English uh, words, which is in the Danish. And I think, that doesn't mean that, in Denmark at least, that, um, that the Danish is not, you know, it's, it's still in the, in the television and, and so on. But it means that we are looking into a different world where, 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 where you cannot I don't, prevent, prevent is a, a wrong word to say, but the, the young people 
they are, they are global citizens. Mm -hmm. They are not just Danish anymore. They are global citizens. They don't, they don't consider just you know, Denmark. They are oriented towards the world. And that means they, they are going to speak also English. That doesn't mean they're going to drop their Danish language, I think, because that's a part of their cultural identity. But they are going to speak English, and they don't really care whether the content is in English or Danish, unfortunately. Mm. 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 Eongo gara, berriz ere, zurekin, baita ere, gai hauetaz, gai hauetze egiteko. Baina, momentu batez, pentsazazu, bazarela dagoeneko, Gipuzkako Foraldunearen, Eusko Jorlaitzaren, eh, aulkularia, hain zuzen ere, eh, kultur, et, sormen industrietan, eta ikusen zunezkotan, eh, aulkularia zarela. Eh, non dik hasiko zinatek, eh, zure, zuen esperientziatik, eta gure eskalara urbilduz, Nun dik hasiko zinateke, nun dik hasi barko enduke urratxak ematen. Nun jarri barko enituzke lehen tasunak. Horretaz gero ere itzen gudulako gelditxuko eh, garenak. Let, let me start by saying, I think you have a fantastic starting point. Let me just start by saying that. And why do I say you have a, a fantastic starting point? because you have a place where creative people want to live. Where do creative people want to live? They want to live in a place that is, is, has great design, great architecture, good food, and, you know, some of these things that, that the creative class really likes. So you have a great potential. Then I also think you have a great potential in that you, you are actually by nature, a bilingual um, area. I mean, Denmark was not born a bilingual area, becoming, but you have this as a natural thing. And you have, an, uh, in regards to the content area, you have a tremendous market, perhaps one of the biggest market, if I look to Latin America, where the consumption, I just see on the rise, on the rise, on the rise, so you have a whole continent which is actually screaming for, for content, um, which I say could be a, a great, good potential for you. And um, one of the things that's really important if you want to create a creative hub is actually also being able to attract talent. And as I started up by saying, you have this area which is a fantastic where Creative people would like to come because they like good architecture, they like good design, they like good food, beautiful. So you are able to attract creative people. And I would somehow use that to see how could I sort of look at how we created this hub. Um, so I think, I think you have lots of opportunities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Labur labur egin dezakegun, ba, mai bakoitzean atera den ondorioen labur pentsio bat, bai. Ba, kontzeptu garrantzitsuenak sozializatzeko eskatuko diogu idazkari bakoitzari. E, Alderari, atera zaizkogu ideiak izan dira, bueno, ba, e, ideia on bat e, eduki behar dela, ez? Baina, e, ideia on, oni filtro bat e, aplikatu behar diogula, e, Eta bueno, e, bebai atera dana izan da, e, ba bueno, gero lor egin barko genukela zango zan, e, marka bat sortzea, ez? E, ba herri moduan edo marka bat sortzea, ba e, 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 gero marka hori, e, marka hori indartzeko eta holan atzetik, ba denok e, 
sektorean eta industrian e, dauden gainontzeko enpresak batzetik joango garenak, ez? Eh? Joango direnak. Ba proiek, e, hainbat proiektu sortu beharrean, ba proiektu handi den artean, proiektu handi bat egitea eta e, denok batera lan egitea, ba marka bat sortzeko eta kanpora ateralizatea, ez? Ba adibide bezala e, sukaldariena atera da, ba gaur egun sukaldaria eta euskalduna basara, ba ja e, e, ba, e, esagupen bat daukazu, es, e, gutxe gora da, bueno, ba holan izan dugu. E, be bai e, pentsatu dugu faktoria horretan, ba formakuntza bat egon barko litzatekeela, formakuntza tarte bat egon barko la, e, litzatekeela, baina formakuntza integratu bat, e, hau da, e, telebista, telebista publiko hau, e, traktorea izatea, Eta e, hor, e, horrekin batera lan egitea bai unibertsitatea, sektorea eta administrazioa. Deno batera, ba, formakuntza on bat e, matea, e, marka bat ere sortu alizateko. E, eta bueno, e, la, txegin dugu edai, ba, lan egin behar dugula bi esparrutan, ba, sektorea lan egin behar dela, baina bai, bai, bai eta ere, aldi berean nazioarte, nazioarte kotxean, eta... E, integratuta egotea, ez? Ez bakarrik egotea le sektorean eta nasarte maian que sea in, que este interrelacionado edo, ezta? Eh, zerbait aportatu nahi baduzu, eh? Ba. E, eta be bai esan dugu ba mentorizazio programak egon barko litzatekeela sektorearen e, esagupenarekin, eh ba lehen hasieran komentatu dugun filtro hori, eh ideien filtro hori egiteko. E, eta amaitzeko, ba, bueno, esan dugu e, publikoa ezagutu behar dela, ez? Zer nahi duten eta momentuan modan edo dagoena jakin behar dela, ba, eduki hoiek sortzeko, ez? Eta baita ere, ba, kontsumo ereduak, ba, lehenago ezagutu behar ditugula, ba, igual e, 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 un, e, egotea, ez? Hor pendiente eta erne, ba, zer kontsumituko dan eta nola kontsumituko da. Es como eh, un observatorio bate do, ba, sortzeko. Bai. Talde honetan atera diranak izan dira, bueno, horko ideia batzu tan oinarritu eta betare, eh, sektorean barruan dinam, dinamika ezberdinetako jendea bilatu, eh, bilatu beharko litzatekela, eh, disziplina ezberdinetako jendea, ideia trukak eta bat egoteko, eta gero ondoren ba, eh, transmedia edo egin alizateko, eta beste ideietako bat izan da edukia asko landu beharko litzatekela edo bintzate produktu berritzaileak sortzeko alegina imerko litzatekela imaz de gehiago esan dute e, ba orain bastante atzeratuta ikusten dela hemengo e, sorkuntza eta eta banaketa batez ere eta gero ba hori banaketaren arloan ba e, telebista eta mugikorret baldintzatzen dutela askotan e, arrakasta ez da eta telebistaren barruan ba en nahi eran ikusten dela gehien bat eh, edukia. E, ba hori, produktuen konsumoa nahi eran egiten dela, originaltasuna bilatu behar dela, e, oain askotan beste leku batzutan, beste herrialde batzutan ikusten dan eh, produktuen kopia egiten saiatzen dela eta horrek askotan eh, arrakasta mugatzen dela. E, edukia prestatzerako orduan gerora nola kontsumitu behar den, nola merkaturatuko den ere e, pentsatu behar dela. Eta edu, hori, edukia e, berzere, ba, gailu ezberdinetarako ba, proposa izan behar dula. Eta horretaz aparte, e, atera da baitare beste ideia bat, e, edukia e, adin franja ezberdinetarako eta e, e, prestatu behar dela, ez da? Edukia kalitatea esaten dugunean kalitatea zer den, ez da? E, eduki ona franja ezberdinetarako, e, ba, batzuk adibidez, Gaztetxoenek askotan YouTube-en ikusten dituztela, YouTube-en ikusten dutena zer da, hori arrakasta da. Bueno, ama bi, ama lau urtetik aurrera e, euskerazko kontsumoa bukatu iten dela, hor dagoela e, izugarrezko zuloa, ez da, eta e, ETB ikustetik, ikustetik pasatzen direla YouTube eta el rubio ez da horrelako ikustera, hor da nor zer da, nola aztertu behar da hori ez da. Eta, eta hori, markarena, sortzearena eta, eta transmedia egitearena. Ba, sare horiek osatzeko espazio bat e, beharko lukela, e, horren hartzen da, horri diagnostiko atomizazio bat izan dela, eta inkluso kompetentziak sortzen direla, azkenean e, subentzio politika horrek ere laguntzen ez duena. Eta hori gainditzeko, igual espazio bat e, izan zitekela, 
edo, e, claro, zaila, eh? eta, eta zentzu horretan, hori gainditzeko aukera emango balu, eta horretatik baliabideak ekonpartituko balira, hainbat baliabide, ba, horrek ere izango luke. Beste alde batetik, aipatu diren beste gauza batzuk labur-labur, ba, horretarako, bueno, gero ja, produkzioaren aldetik eta jakin behar dela, jendeak zer konsumitzen duen, eta ze soportetan, eta nola konsumitzen duen, jakiteko zer dan e, produzitu behar duzuna. Ez? Orduan, e, hemen planteatu da galdera ia ikerketa zentru bat izan beharko luken, et, edo produkzio zentru bat, ez dakit horri erantzuna man diogun, ze ez dugu horretaz den okitzegin, eh? baina bai izan dira planteatu diren gauzetako batzuk. Ia ikerketa zentru bat izan behar duen, e, produkzio zentru bat izan behar koluken, eta gero aipatu den beste gauza bat, baita ere diagnosiaren ikuspegitik da, e, bueno, ba, ba bi bi nola baiteko bi generazion arteko txokea dagoela, analogiko digitalaren artekoa, eta horri ere erreparatu behar diogula, azken finean, pues, aldaketa garei batean gaudelako. Eta hor rutzik. E, gu gure bukatu deu sola saldila, galdera, galdera batzuk eitzen gure buruari, ez? Haberre faktoria, ba, zertan datzan, ez? E, jakiteko, haberre elburua, benetan, ba, ba, zein izango dan, eta, eta, bueno, guk ez dauko horretako erantzunik, noski, baino, baino, bueno, bai, e, e, zehaztu deu, ba, konektibitate bat eon barko dula, eta horre faktorian dauen jendian artian, ba, eon barko diala bebai, e, konektauta bai, bai administrazioarekin, bai enpresekoekin, bai igual unibertsitatekoekin, edo. E, gero, galdetu de gure buruari bebaitzuk esan dezuna, bere e, horre sorkuntza tailerrak bakarrik izango dian, edo sorkuntza faktoria, edo ekoiztu eingo duten. E, hortako, bueno, guk e, ikusten deuna da, e, anne eongo dian langileak edo bebai, e, koordinatzaileak igual izan barko diala bebai ere, eta koordinatzaile hoiek, ba, bastakite enpresatik etorriko dian edo nondik etorriko dian, baino, baino ikusten deu e, bai ezagutza bat e, euki beharko dutela, ez? E, gero itzen deu ere, e, ba, hori esan dezuten abe bai, haber e, prestatzen dian edo, edo e, materialak edo e, sorkuntza hori, haber bakarrik e, bezero batentzat izango dan edo ez, ez? Haber, bueno, pentsatu da igual ikusentzunezkoa beste hainbat sektoretan ere e, erabiltzen dela, orduan, e, ba, bueno, haber, e, haber ezagutza hori hor barnian ere eongo dan. Eta gero, e, azkena, azken puntu modun, e, prozesua, E, ondo irudikatua egotia, ez da, elburuak ba, oso ondo zehaztuak egotia. Txiringitoarena erabili da apur bat e, neutralizatzeko egon daitezken arrisku batzuk. Eta da, badauden azpiegitura batzuk dagoeneko existitzen diren e, beste batzuen errepikapena ez izatea edo izatearen arriskua. Eta hor, bai, eiken... EITB eta bestelako ja, dagoeneko martxan dauden erakunde eta enpresa, ero enpresa klasterren presentzia ja badago, duen horrek rentabilizatzea eta ez horren beste azpigitura fizikoa, baizik eta ez fizikoa, ez txiringito bat, ez montaje bat, baizik eta sorkuntzarako eta ideietarako lapikoa, hori da bigarren hitza. Ikusten da mai hontan, E, azpimarratu da, ze garrantzitsua den, kanpoan egiten diren gauzak ezagutu, barruan dauden beharrak, nahiak, interesak eta gazteak, bereziki gazteak direnen e, kontsumo portaerak zeintzu dien, hoiek aztertu, ikertu, eta hoientzako ideiak lantzeko azpiegitura bat eukitzea, izatea, e, hau, faktoria bera. Beraz, ideia lapiko bat. Eta gero, sektoreak, erakundeek, eskua sartuko dute, partaideak diren sektoreek, eskua sartuko dute, eta nahi duten ideia aterako dute aprobetsatzeko. Orduan, ikusten da orokorrean sinergiaren komenigarretasuna, bai erakunde publiko eta bai privatuena, unibertsitate desberdinena, eta orokorrean edukien zentraltasuna. Edukiak egingo gaitu bereizgarri, edukiak egingo gaitu e, etorkizunera begira zer eskaini e, eukitzeko ba, ba, dinamikak eukitzea. E, edukiak berak markatuko du arrakasta. Eta horretarako ikustea e, faktoria toki egokia izan daitekela. E, 
Faktoria zubilana indezakela, sortzaien artian eta industrian dauden jent pertsonales berdinen artian, askotan onduan bizigela oso gertu bizigela, baina ez gela elkar zagutzen, eta garrantzitsua izango litzatekela proiektuak aurrea tatzeko, batzuk beste notizik izatia. Euskerak eukidezaken ere, azkenean Euskal, Euskarazko edukiak sortzeaz arikea, eta Euskerak Euskeraz sortzeko motivazioak sortzearen garrantziaz, ez da? Komentantzen zen, garei batean, agian Wikipedian edo sortu ziala, Euskarazko edukiak edo igotzen zituztenak, eta gaur egun YouTuberrak eta bagaztelaniera edo erdera jotzen dutela. Orduan, igual hor, Euskerarekin ere, garrantzi bat horri eman. Eta pixkat, eta lokaltasuna, urbiltasuna duk idezakeen ere garrantzi azkenean, guri historiak kontatzia, imitaziora erori gabe. Lelangoko galdera iten genuena geure buru eri izan, faktoria bat zertarako, ze elburuz, beharrezkoa alda. Ba, eonezkero, Euskarazko kontsumorako joerak bideratuko duen proiektu bat izan beharko luke. Ontxe komentatu duten bezala, ikusita gazten kontsumo iturak bestelako izkuntzetara jotzen nahi diela. Bestalde, sortzailei babesa ematearen garrantziara ipatu da, eta Euskaraz sortzen duten, oise, sortzaile oien, ba, iesaldiak ekidin aldera. Erderazko fuga de cerebros ura Euskal sormen prozesutan ematen ari dela somatu dugulako. Leku fizikoa izan zitekela aipatu da, hemen zeharkare eta bakalera aipatu da, Eta baina garrantzia ere eman zailo erri txikiagotan ateatzen nahi dian sortzaileen gana eilegatzeko beharra. Da nahi riburu baten zentralizatzia fizikoki edo estrategikoki ere igual elizatekela egokia izango, aizik eta bestelako lekutan espazio merkiago dialako eta sortzaileek erri txikiagotarako jotzen ari dialako. Bikaintasuna, ambizio txu izatearen garrantzia ere aipatu dugu, eta faktoria horrek talentuak sortu, identifikatu eta erakartzeko gaitasuna izan beharko lukela aipatu da. Beti ere, honen jarraipena eta kalidadea bermatuko delakuan. Ondo daudela baliabideak eskaintzie, ondo daudela mundu guztiaren esku guztia, baina benetan kalidadea eta liakorra dian proiektuak eta sortzen diala bermatuko duen ebaluazio jarraipen bat edo gainbegiratze prozesu bat egon da dila. Ikusgarritasuna eta biztaratzeko gure produktuak, euskerazko proiektuak eta produktuak biztaratzeko beharra. Marketinen ez gabizela oso fin aipatu dela, baina ez gaitasun falta beti baizik eta balia bide urria ditugula. Asko inbertitzen dugu sormenean, asko inbertitzen dugu egitean, da behin egin da dagoela ez dago gula balia biderik hori biztaratzeko, zabaltzeko eta ez azkenian bertan gure kajoitxuan gordeta polit-polit geatzen dela. Sortzaiak kolektibizatzeko ere beharra atera da. Hau da, sortzaie kolektibo diferente, baina aman komuna dituzten balia bideak, pilatzea, taldekatzea eta hori lehen aipatu den koordinazio hori erabateko premia duela adierazi dute bai hemen. Eta baita ere, aipatu dana, edortak urtzik ere aipatu duten bezala, edukiak duen balioa, kalitatea. Gaur egungo ikasle, bueno, gaztiek eta ikaslek ez dien gaztiek ebai, ingeles ez diote hainbeste izkuntzeri erreparatzen, ez dia igual duela urte batzuk zeu den gazte militante hoiek, aizik eta edukia erreparatzen ba diote. Ber interesekua bada kontsumituko dute, inglesez, gaztelaniaz, frantsesez, edo bestelako izkuntza baten badeaudere. Eta hoxe izan da, bueno.